Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be going over number 21 from the AMC 10B of 2020, or number 18 from the AMC 12B of 2020. Now, this problem was unique because even though it was in the final five, the geometry involved with his concepts and level of thinking wasn't actually that difficult. In fact, the only thing I would say really difficult about this problem is the amount of steps involved to get to your right solution. On the test, I had a lot of trouble on this on this problem because of the amount of steps to be organized. And that's why I'm gonna go over today. In square A, B, C, D, points E and H lie on A, B, and D, A, respectively, so that A, E is equal to A, H. Points F and G lie on B, C, and C, D, respectively. And points I and J lie on E, H, so that F, I is perpendicular to E, H, and G, J is perpendicular to G, H, E, H. See the figure below. Triangle AEH, quadrilateral BFIE, quadrilateral DHJG, and pentagon FCGJAI each has an area of 1. What is the FI squared? So, the first thing I'd like to note about this figure is that we can see that it is comprised com consists of four major shapes each with an area of 1 so because it's composed of four parts each with the area of 1 the area of the square itself is 4 and since the area of a square is just merely its silent squared in this case we can have the equation s squared is equal to 4 where it's pretty clear that s is equal to 2. So right off the bat, we know the psi length of the square. Then, we look what the question is asking for. The question itself is asking for fi squared. So fi is in this awkward region between this weird quadrilateral and this pentagon. I believe in this problem, there are two ways we could go about solving for fi. We could break up this pentagon into different parts and then use that to find the length of fi. Or we could turn this quadrilateral into something more appealing and exploit that to find the length of fi. In this solution, I'll be exploiting quadrilateral fbei to find the length of fi. Now, the first way to do this is by extending lines he and FB to a point P. So let's do that. From there, we have to try to figure out the dimensions of triangle FIP and like the different ratios of the angles and sides with one another. And we can do this by looking at triangle AHE. So triangle a H E is isosceles, and because vertex A is also a vertex of a square, we know that angle H A E is a right angle. So triangle H A E is is an isosceles right right triangle. Now, since this angle is ninety, and then these two angles are equal and add up to 180. We know that the measure of each of these angles is 45. So try so angles A E H is 45. That also informs us of triangle E B P. Since angles HEA and angles PEB are vertical angles, we can also say that triangle PEB is also 45. 
and we merely extended CP, CB to form line CP, and CB was already perpendicular to AB. CP also is perpendicular to AB, telling us that angle ABP is also a right angle. And once again, we get another isosceles right triangle, which shows us that angle BPE is also 45 degrees. With this, we can create once again another isosceles right triangle because we get that this angle is 45 and we get that FIP forms a right angle. So, with that, we get angle angle IFP to be 45. So now, we know a lot about triangle FIP. We know it's an isosceles right triangle. So, that, so then, the measures of FI and IP are the same. I'm just going to do two because we don't know if it's the same as HA and AE. And then we also know each and every of its angles. Now that we have triangles FIP drawn out, we can see something really interesting. Triangle FIP is similar to triangle HAE because they both share all their angles in common. Using this, we also know that their sides are in proportion to one another. Using, keeping this at the back of our minds, I think it would be best if we try to find out more information about triangle HAE and try to tie it back to triangle FIP. Well, we know that triangle HAE is an isosceles right triangle. And so we know that A is equal to AE. So since these two side lengths are perpendicular, the area of triangle HA and AE is half of its height and its base, which in this case, the height and the base are the same. So let's express the height as S and the base also as S. The area of the triangle is the height times the base over 2. So the area of this triangle, which we know is 1, is S squared over 2. 2 equals to 1. With that, we can easily solve the equation by multiplying by mo both sides and then taking the square root and find out that s is equal to root 2. So now we know ha is equal to ae, which is also equal to root 2. But as we deduced earlier, the whole square is 2. So if AE is root 2, then we can say that EB is 2 minus root 2. And since we know that triangle EBP is an isosceles right triangle, because it has angles 45, 45, and 90, we can also say that BP is 2 minus root 2 and use this to find the area of triangle EBP to be 2 minus root 2 squared over 2 because just like triangle HAE EB is the base and BP is the height so the area of this triangle is EB times PB over 2, and EB and 
PB are both two root two. So expanding this out and dividing, expanding the top part, we get six minus four root two over two, which can eventually be simplified down into three minus two root two as the area of triangle P B E adding that to quadrilateral F I E B we get that the area of triangle F I P is one plus three minus two root two. So area of triangle F I P is equal to four minus two root two. Once again, we have another isosceles triangle, and we already established that the area of that is S square over two, where S is the side length. So if we express that equation again, we can find for the at we can find for s, and in this case, we can also find for s squared directly, which is actually the answer to our question. And we find that by multiplying both sides by two, so we get s squared is equal to eight minus four root two. S is fi. And the question is asking us for fi squared. So fi squared is obviously s squared as well. So in this problem, we have s squared is equal to eight minus four root two. Thus, fi squared is also eight minus four root two giving us an answer of B. Now, this problem wasn't too difficult. All we used were isosceles right triangles. And we just used the areas of those, the angle measures of those, and the sides of those. But this problem still made its way onto the final five of an AMC 10 test because of how many times we have to do it and how many times we have to stay organized with our work. And throughout the process, we've had several nasty calculations, such as this. But ultimately, if you could keep your work organized and just remember basic concepts such as isosceles right triangles, even you could do this final five problem.